Disclaimer! In this video, I will be spoiling one and only one of the Tears of the Kingdom enemies that was recently leaked through an unreleased art book. So if you want to play the game 100% blind, I totally get it. Come back once you've experienced this new Zelda adventure for yourself. That being said, if you're okay with a very minor, spicy little spoiler and like living on the edge like I do, come along as I craft a leaked mini boss from Tears of the Kingdom, the Bone Talus. You all had your chance to turn back, so here is the leaked page of the art book that I'm using as a reference, and they actually already showed us the talus on the left in a previous trailer. It's the talus on the right that we will be recreating. Now the first step in getting started on this project is going outside and collecting some materials. Once I've collected a good amount, I'm going to quickly go back inside because intimidating piano music began to play, and once I make it safely back inside, we're going to make a Breath of the Wild delicacy. Just kidding, all I did was boil the twigs to clean them and then I set them out to dry, but let's put those away for the time being so we can work on the talus itself. I'm going to be using some XPS foam that I stacked up and then I can carve out the general shape once they're all glued together. Now fun fact, I actually have no clue on the official name of this talus variant because I can't read Japanese, but I mean, come on, stone talus, bone talus, I mean, my brain can't be the only one amused by that. <laughs> Anyway, I carved some adorable rocky legs that I skewered a toothpick through, which will connect the legs to the body and eventually connect the body to the base. Now I'm using the pebbles we collected to add some texture to the surface, but this was kinda useless. Because I lack patience, I used super glue on some parts of the foam, but um, super glue eats through foam. So to cover up those holes, as well as mask the seams between each XPS layer, a few layers of gesso was the answer. Once those were dried, I gave the whole model two layers of a black paint and Mod Podge mixture, and then I could start the process of layering on progressively lighter grays to achieve a realistic looking rock. Now make sure you stick around until the end because I'm going to be sculpting four bokoblins and one will be a surprise for the final shots, but these four bokoblins drew some messy symbols all over this talus. So I quickly replicate that with some white paint, and once all that graffiti was dry, we could begin working on this big boy's coolest feature, the giant bones it has for arms. Now I brainstormed a lot of ways to make the bone as realistic as I could, and the best way I found was to just bake a very basic shape and then carve out all the details. Because the clay is already baked, when you carve into it, it leaves you with a very bone-like brittle texture, which I really liked, and I thought it added that wear and tear that this enemy would probably have after kicking your butt so many times. I glued all of the bones in, this big boy has two bones on his back, and to make the bones look extra, extra extra realistic, I gave all of them a yellowish brown acrylic wash. Nice. Now that Talus the Rock Johnson is pretty much done, it's time to outfit it with all the platforms that the Bokoblins will use. I took a few artistic liberties with these platforms, which you'll see a little bit later, but the first thing we need to do is use some coffee stir sticks and popsicle sticks to make several platforms of questionable integrity. Underneath every platform, I'm gluing the twigs we collected to the edges and trying to find twigs that fit the most naturally underneath each side. With all of the platforms fully pieced together, it's time to give them an acrylic wash to make them look authentic and not like they were just taken out of an office break room. Once they were all dry, I could then attach them to my lovely geological child with a few dabs of super glue. Now there's one thing missing for these platforms, and to fix that, it's time to use up every stick within a 5 mile radius. 
To make all of the wooden stakes that protect the bottom of the platforms, I cut all of the twigs into similarly sized pieces and used an X-Acto knife to create a point at the bottom. Once I did this a million gajillion times, I then used super glue to secure them into clusters and wrap some twine around them as the final detail. And since the twine was still out, I wrapped a few pieces around the top portion of the bones, and finally I could secure all of the wooden stakes we made to the bottom of the platform. Now I used hot glue for most of it, but I also went back and glued on individual stakes wherever they were needed. Now the last platform is kinda special. It's a square lookout platform that protects valuable ore. Once I glued on all the legs, I could then finally take out some clay to make the bones that are attached to the bottom. And these are skinny, longer bones, and just like the arms, I baked them first and then carved in some detail. But while we have clay out, I'm gonna make the valuable ore that sits underneath the lookout, a few standing shields that kinda just look like pieces of wide bark that they ripped off a tree, and a skull they hang on the front of the tower. Alice. Next up are some exploding barrels, which no Bokoblin camp could be complete without. I used some red clay to make the body, and once it was baked to retain a wooden texture, I then used some black clay to add the top and bottom of the barrels. I also made a handful of teeth that will glue onto the corners of our platforms and detailed them like I did all of the other bones. With everything baked, I'm gonna paint all of the clay pieces in their respective colors and patterns. For the ore, I just painted it black and used some metallic gold on the tips of the rock as well as a dry brush to accentuate all the angles. The bark shields got a few layers of different browns and also got some Bokoblin graffiti on them. For the explosive barrels, I painted on the skull signs with a toothpick because it was the smallest thing I had on hand, and then I gave the black parts a layer of metallic paint. Then it was finally time to attach those long bones we made for the lookout post, and after gluing them across each other, I tied some twine around the place where the bones cross. Once I did that to every side of the lookout, I painted the bones with an acrylic wash, and from there, we could finally start gluing on most of the accessories we just made. I also realized that the bark shields needed some twine wrapped around the bottom, so I made sure to do that, and the last accessory I needed to glue on was the skull. With all of that in place, now I can finally show you the artistic liberties I ended up taking with this project. Firstly, and this is kinda basic, but it isn't in the official design, was a little staircase behind the shield at the front. The second and far more exciting one was a suspension bridge on the back of the talus. I figured adding these not only made everything way cuter, but actually made sense practically so the Bokoblins can easily move from platform to platform. With all of the groundwork done for the talus, it's time to do the groundwork for the ground. <laughs> the base is going to be incredibly simple. I'm tapering the edges of a big piece of foam and using any excess to cut up and use as boulders. Once I have the general shape down, I give it a few layers of gesso and some black paint and Mod Podge. I'm basically just redoing all the steps I used to make the body of our talus. Then I painted on some dirt and from there I could add static grass. Once the grass was all filled in, I glued in some clumps of just the yellow static grass to kind of act as a break from all the green. And the last detail before we can start sculpting our bokoblins is adding the red flags all around the talus. Now I have this used strip of fabric that I used back when I made Fang and Bone from Breath of the Wild, so since it's dirty I figured I could cut it up and reuse it for this project. 
And now it's time for my absolute favorite part, which was making tiny little bokoblins to stash all around the talus. Like I said earlier, you better stick around for the final shots, cause I'm leaving one of the four as a mystery bonus for watching the entire video, but for the other three, I will detail the process as best I can. Now for the first one, I wanted to stick to something basic, since I've never sculpted at this small of a scale before, so this first bokoblin is just gonna be in a pretty basic pose, holding a boko club. Now in my last video, I sculpted the boss bokoblin, another enemy from Tears of the Kingdom, and I learned that sculpting from the legs up was the best method for bokoblin shaped creatures. This way their belly can hang over their loincloths and look pretty good, and once it's on, adding the pecs and arms is pretty easy. Once I've given their arms a little bit of definition, I can go back and sculpt their feet. Since they only have two toes, it makes it quite simple, but I'd say my favorite part is adding the nails and using an X-Acto knife to make them look properly gnarly. The hardest part by far was getting the faces right. Not so much the features themselves, but rather the scale of the face. You see, I sculpted like four heads that all ended up being way too big for the body, and on my fifth try, I finally got the scale correct. To make sure all the heads ended up consistent in size, I made four different mouths that were all the same size, which I could then build on top of to add different facial expressions for all of my bokoblins. Here you can really see the size difference, and the fifth try finally looked correct when I placed it on the body. Then I can blend in the head to his neck, and before I can finish him, I have to make a miniature boko club. I used a toothpick and some aluminum foil to make it as light as possible, and then I covered it all in brown clay. At the top, I added the rings to make it look like it used to be a tree, and then I textured it and used some chalk pastels to highlight that texture. After adding some last minute shoulder blades, I baked him, secured the boko club to his hands, and then added ears and his fingernails, which I detailed just like I did his toenails. Then I could paint on whatever details were left, like the inside of his ears, as well as some pupils. Now how lame would it be if I just made the same bokoblin three more times? I want them all to be unique, so the second one will be achieving a deeper sleep than I ever have in my entire life. Starting with his legs, I began to build up his body, and I made sure his mouth was open a bit wider since I wanted him to look like he was snoring the day away. Between every few steps, I'd use some acetone to remove any fingerprints and smooth out the clay. Of course, I couldn't forget an adorable little belly button, and for the fingers, I found it a lot easier to apply the nails after I baked him since the fingers are very small and delicate. And now, onto our last bokoblin that I will be detailing. This one ended up being my absolute favorite. I really wanted one to be shooting an arrow, so this little guy is the archer of the group, which means I got to make the world's tiniest spiked boko bow. It also meant the position of his hands was a bit harder to get right since they're wrapped around two different parts of the bow, but it ended up looking so cute. I also didn't forget to make him squint one of his eyes, since I know you have to do that when shooting a bow, and from there I added the rest of his details like his horn, ears, and fingernails. The last thing I made for him was a tiny bomb arrow from a toothpick, which I cannot stop fawning over, but with that attached, the only thing left to do is glue all of our bokoblins into their respective positions. Now you stuck all the way until the end, so please do enjoy this monster montage of our new Tears of the Kingdom mini boss, the Bone Talus.
And of course, I always have to say thank you to my wonderful patrons, the amazing DIYers, our two new crafters, the Hedgehog and Avery Kirkpatrick, as well as my glorious artificer, Josh K. So if you want an official title like DIYer or crafter, as well as all of these amazing <laughs> benefits, consider supporting me over on Patreon. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out my other Zelda videos to tide yourself over as best you can until Tears of the Kingdom comes out. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future crafts, and with that, I will see you next time.